Music, what is allowed to hear and when? How can you convince the youth to minimize listening to music? How can you convince your children to minimize the listening to music? <laughs> Brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You don't give anyone a piece of breath here, huh? You, you begin by these questions. You live in a culture where music is as essential to them as food. And this is not an exaggeration. <clears throat> in my encounters, many encounters with non-Muslims regularly, young and old and of different classes, religious, non-religious, uh, music is, is an essential and integral part of their lives, first of all. And of course, living in this country, obviously, that influence is there. Well, the way to approach it, Wallahu <clears throat> ta'ala alam, is definitely through gradualism. Like also, Brother Muhammad has said earlier, all these things begin much earlier. If earlier in the lives of our children we inculcate them with the beautiful ways of this deen, and gradually why especially some sort of music is wrong. And when we teach them that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes something haram, especially when they are teenagers, that he makes things haram not because it is like a tyrannical order, but he makes things haram for our own good and because they are harmful to us. And then we can collect statistics and they are available about the consequences of listening generally to music and in particular the music that most people listen to. And many people know these facts. People who have committed murders who have killed because they were listening to some sort of music. You all know that, don't you? Anybody doesn't know these incidents? If you knew about these incidents, raise your hands. Okay, so I'm not the only one who know about these things. And also, as in the khutbah, uh, in, in the khatara of this morning of, uh, of Salatul Fajr, that Brother Muhammad, Jazakallah khair, Brother Muhammad Yunus, shared with us, about the preventive measures that this deen set up against committing zina, one of which, by the way, is stay away from the music that is around here. Because all of it, and you know, is composed by, all of it, or most of it, I, I should say, is composed by, played by, what sort of people for what sort of purpose? Many of you perhaps, and I do now listen to some, uh, to some television, watch some television shows. And they invite all sorts of singers and, right? And musicians. Now this is my approach to the situation. Do you know what kind of people they are? You know what kind of people they are. Are these people that as a Muslim you want to emulate in your life? Wallahi, even at a time when perhaps many have not come to this country and used to listen to music, even at one point soft rock, hmm? soft rock with good lyrics, I can tell you a few of those names. And then after a while, you see that the people who sing those words never live by them. Those beautiful words sometimes, they're poetic, beautiful words. They never live by them. Their lives are known, 99% of them, to be lives of what? Promiscuity, sexual promiscuity. Absence most of the time in, in divine consciousness. And these become therefore models in our lives. Do we want 
to have those people as model. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we gave up something for him, Wallahi al-Azim, Wallahi al-Azim, Wallahi al-Azim. When we give up something for Allah, Allah replaces that thing with something better for us. And I'm going to give you examples. If you, some people naturally, by the way, when Allah, as our ulama, Jumhur al-Ulama have said, that musical instruments to play them and to listen to them is usually haram under regular circumstances. They say, هذا ليس حرام لذاته وإنما حرام ذريع حرام تحريم ذريع What does this mean? This means that beautiful sounds, musical sounds are not wrong in themselves. But what they may lead to it is haram tahrim adhari'ah. What they may lead to or usually lead to. On average, in the life of a person and in the life of a community. So when you give that up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you things, wallahi, to appreciate the beauty of nature. That divine art outside there when you look at it. And you see music everywhere. The sound of the wind. Wallahi, the, the way a breeze makes sound with leaves. And I used to, a long time ago, to take a tape recorder back home and go to the countryside and record natural sounds when I was a teenager. And then when I go to bed, after my dhikr, I listen to them. And they draw in me awe and dhikr for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I enjoy them so much until I came to this country much later on I realized now that they have professional tapes of natural sounds beautiful very very beautiful you can enjoy them it is halal enjoyment and at the same time they inspire in you the desire for dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You give up something for Allah, Allah will give you in exchange something else that others don't have. This is as briefly as I can be on this question, Allah ta'ala. Ta <coughs> the next question, some questions came up coming up they're like um, interchangeable so I'm just gonna modify myself 